Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to have you here with us in beautiful Cannes. Maybe you could kick off with a brief introduction to your film, Burning Days. What can people expect if they watch it? People can expect uh, a politically claustrophobic atmosphere. Uh, can expect to see a kind of loneliness, the feeling of loneliness uh, of a person who is investigating for truth and uh, who is disappointed to real by realizing that people are not really interested in the truth. So people can expect something a little bit pessimistic about, about the country and about the world. Mm. Can you yeah. tell us the sort of inspiration behind it or the starting point? Yeah. I mean, I believe, I guess it's sort of in the era we're in now, but perhaps you can say kind of in the aftermath of Trump in particular, yeah. um, but you know, sort of this rise in populism that yeah. we're living through. Yeah, yeah the, the main inspiration is, is, is the rise of po uh, populism, specifically in my country, of course. We are uh, severely experiencing in this uh, kind of uh, governance in the last years, but of course it's becoming more and more in a universal case. And not only in the developing countries, but only, uh, but also in, in in Western countries, and as you said, in even the United States, we are quite astonished and we are quite surprised that people can vote such irresponsible authoritarian figures uh, who really destroy the basis of democracy, and uh, how these people can manipulate the basic needs of people who can exploit the basic uh, yeah the needs of the people so it was my main uh, point of uh, my, my my initial point uh, to start this film to write this film and then going from that basis how did you then construct your characters and your narrative to kind of tease out these specific yeah. themes yeah, yeah i just wanted to to create a character who is fighting against corruption and this kind of uh, authoritarian figure but at the same time I wanted to I want I want I don't want to create a kind of good and evil distinction so I just wanted to complicate on my main character so uh, I put an element of crime and element of suspicion that even our main protagonist can feel that he is the he can be the accomplice of the of the crime. So uh, when I started writing, uh, the story became more and more complicated. Although this this the frame of populism remain intact. I mean, when you go into the film, you you can see some layers, uh, some sub stories, uh, and then they all combine at one point at the end. And can you tell us a little bit about your cast, how you decided to work with Salah Hattin and, and, and Ekin? Yeah. And Ekin, sorry. Yeah. Um, and how you worked with them to kind of develop these characters and achieve your vision? Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, first of all, the appearance of the, of the prosecutor was very important for me because I just wanted to find a person who's, who doesn't look really manly. Uh, I looked for a kind of baby face uh, actor uh, because uh, he should be a little bit naive, he should be inexperienced, so he should create an image of weakness a little bit for the for the common people. But of course, he's trying to overcome uh, it by using his authority. So, uh, especially his appearance was very important from the very beginning, and. Um, uh, I saw Salatin in a play, in a theatre play, and I, I liked his appearance and I called him and made auditions, several auditions and several rehearsals and at the end I decided that he should be the, the main cast. And then I looked for the, for, for the journalist uh, and I really looked for whether they will match or not. And in the in the auditions, of course, Ekin was was a perfect match with Salatin. But by the way, they are both uh, famous actors in Turkey, uh, popular actors, uh, and uh, and uh, it is nice that they also wanted to be a part of the film, and they really put a lot of efforts in it. Can you talk to us also a bit about the locations and how 
maybe the contrast between kind of the city and the rural areas and you know how we maybe have those fixed ideas of the city being progressive and maybe conservative notions more for in the country but you know things aren't always that clear either and, yeah, and, and yeah. that black and white yeah exactly exactly uh, the, the location is very important for me because it should give the impression of drought. I mean, it should, it should look like a, a desert-like place. And it should, uh, the town also is, is also very important for me. It should create an atmosphere of uh, claustrophobia. So it must be a kind of hilly place at the, at the same time. So and on that location, I found, I found both. It's also a desert-like, dry, but it's a little bit hilly. Uh, uh, and yes, you're right. I don't... Uh, I don't think that this is a this is a story about division between city and the and the countryside. But of course, it it has elements because the prosecutor is coming from the city. For example, he's more kind of animal friendly, at least, uh, while the the conservative the the, the 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 rural people were much more harsh in you know hunting and and those kind of things. But the city people are more. Uh, prone to to animal the issues of animal rights blah blah so you can find such contrast but it's not only related with you know city and uh, countries right it's it's uh, it's related with the mentality of uh, of politics mm. mentality of governance and um, can you say a little bit about the um, the elements of the the gay relationship and and homophobia and how that was a particular point perhaps that you wanted to maybe wasn't there in the original story, but because of what we've seen in recent years, I think in particularly in Turkey, but in other countries as well, of this kind of backward step, if you like, in, yeah. in terms of tolerance and acceptance, yeah. even at the, the legal level, not yeah. just a societal yeah. thing. You know, it's one of the interesting trademarks of authoritarian populist leaders. They are all homophobic. Mostly they are all homophobic because they always try to steer uh, the feelings of common people, they try to exploit the, the prejudices of common people, so they like uh, to play on these prejudices. So, unsurprisingly, uh, maybe they are all homophobic, and it's the case in Turkey. Now, in Turkey, in the last years, homophobia became almost a state policy. They are really preventing to uh, representation of uh, LGBT people uh, on TVs, on channels. Uh, so, I mean, it's not a coincidence that I put this homophobia issue on the, on the film. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, it is an element which makes their scapegoating process easier. Uh, and at one point, I also find it interesting that in terms of the psychology of Emre, uh, I like the idea that while Emre is investigating the truth about the event, he also starts investigating himself, mm -hmm. his own desires. Uh, you know, like a prosecutor who's a kind of representing the state, it's not really easy to, to, to discover his non-normative desires. So it's also a, a kind of uh, search to, to his soul. For me, I mean, all these homophobia and homoerotic erotic elements uh, 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 were in the film because of these reasons. And uh, maybe you can say a little bit about kind of the more like genre elements um, in the film, um, kind of the, the crime aspects, um, and whether this is something you kind of wanted to play with a bit more with, with, with this film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was not my intention at the very beginning. I just wanted to make the story more. Uh, complex and richer and I said that uh, we should I should need something besides the water issue and I think that it should be a crime and then when I when I put the crime uh, yeah it, it evolved in a way that uh, it is in a detective story but of course we, we never know the real answer uh, in a truly genre film of course you you will have the answer you will have you will have who was the perpetrator yeah in my film there is no open knowledge about this but yeah I, I really used these kind of elements for suspense to create suspense for the to create the psychological complexity of our character yeah when I 
rewrote the story, I discovered the elements of genre and I used them. And ultimately, what do you hope that people take away from watching your film? Because you can say sometimes with cinema, there's also the experience of, you know, like you say, the thriller aspects and the, and the suspense. Um, but then you really are hitting on lots of crucial issues and almost this story becomes a microcosm of what could be happening in Turkish society, but also more broadly and how are, is fear um, and oppression being used to kind of keep people in this sort of cycle of, yeah. of poverty and, and yeah. things like that. So yeah. how do you think this film can perhaps prompt conversations or, or at least you know, open people's eyes to what's going on? Yeah. You know, actually this film will, will not be a, a box of success, obviously, because it's an art house film. It, it will have a limited audience. Uh, so I don't have uh, big expectations about that. But my, my expectation is that uh, I think it, I would be happy if the people goes out of the cinema and says that, oh, uh, it really expressed my feelings, it really expressed my, how do you say, uh, claustrophobia, mm -hmm. uh, my desperate situation in, in the country. I just wanted to be a kind of reflector uh, of the people of the people who feel the same way like us, like the prosecutor. But at the same time, I also wanted to say that, to create the impression that, especially at the end, uh, nothing ends. The, the fight is going on. The fight is, is continuing. And what does it mean to you to have your film playing here in Cannes? Of course, it's important. It's, it's, a, it's a very important venue. Uh, it's a very important channel to make your film uh, more uh, popular, not popular, but you can reach people uh, to come, you can show your film to the festivals. Of course, it's a very good way of highlighting your film. Mm. So I, I feel I'm quite lucky, we're all we are quite, quite lucky and we are happy to be here. Mm. And maybe just looking at your own trajectory in terms of your career, you know, this following on from Frenzy, but also your um, TV series. Uh, how do you see you've kind of developed your work in that time and what are you going to work on next? Uh, of course, honestly, it's, it's, I feel that it's kind of a step. Uh, so probably it will, it will change my course of work. But, but of course, we will see first the, the receptions. We will understand the receptions. We will read the reviews and we will understand how the people uh, find the film. Then. I really, I will really understand its impact on my career. Fantastic, thank you so much for sharing thank all you. that with us and really enjoy the rest of your time here in Cannes. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.